Hey. Yeah. You heard about TrueNorth.bet? Yeah. This is a dumb question. You told me. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, well, did you hear that it was built from the ground up to be the credible, dependable, safe gaming experience that Canadians like you, Steve, and like you, Jesse, are looking for? Yeah. You told me. TrueNorth.bet focuses, focuses exclusively on Canada. Well, I'm from there. I like that. And Canadian players. Well, I'm... I'm I play hockey now. I'm pretty good. TrueNorth.bet also takes pride in having the best customer service on the market. They are professional, they are efficient, and they are built for you and you and you and me. TrueNorth.bet us. has an incredible offer. Us, us. All of us. Yeah. TrueNorth.bet has an incredible offer for you. They want to match your first deposit up to 500 bucks in bonus funds. Oh. How great is that? All you have to do is visit sdpn.truenorth.bet and register this incredible offer. Again, 500 bucks in bonus funds with your first deposit. sdpn.truenorth.bet. Let's say it five times fast. sdpn.truenorth.bet. sdpn.truenorth.bet. This is a terrible bet. Keep going. S no. no. Yep. sdpn.truenorth.bet. I'm doing it three. All right. It three is impressive. I well done. I would have taken the under. Long story short, Leafs and Devils. Obviously, again, they're the worst team in the league, or one of, but... I also was watching the Devils, and I'm like... Adam, they're in fifth. <laughs> yeah, the right. In the oh, division. Oh, the Devils. What is the... What are they doing? The Devils? What are they trying to do? Like, their, their goaltending is astonishing. Yeah, well, they don't have either goaltender they went into the season with, but the problem is they just sort of are sitting in their... For lack of a better term, they're sitting in their own filth. <laughs> Like they, their goalies went down, and they're like, "Well, what if we did nothing about that?" Actually, and what? And let me ask you this: What incentive is there for them to do anything? They're not a contender. They've been out of the playoff race for three months. You know what I mean? But what are they building towards? Like the big splash with Dougie Hamilton last year? Great. I don't know. But like, what are you really doing? I thought they they thought they were a lot better than they were. I thought coming into the season, they thought they could contend in that division. And looking at how weak it's turned out, they probably had a good idea about that. Hey, if we can get a little couple players, the guys play a little well, we can actually make a little splash here. And it just isn't true. Well, and like, they just don't have the the guys. He sure looks fine. Mm -hmm. um, he looks fine though. Uh, Hughes looks fine. Fine. Actually, I think even a little bit better than fine. Okay. Fine. He looks fat. Fine. But but like when you look at this, who's going to score goals for them? Dougie Hamilton. On the double minor in the third period, shambolic. He's okay. So every time I see a New Jersey Devils highlight pack now on Sports mm -hmm. uh, Sports Center, it's him getting it's, wrecked. It's him, him sort of bag skating it after going after the guy because they were six on five and the guy <laughs> scoring on the empty empty net. I've seen it like three times in the last three weeks. It's always and it's always Dougie Hamilton sort of what, but he's not even really skating that hard. You didn't get to see this at the game, but when Subban flipped the puck over the glass. There was a great slow mo of him going, uh, and Bunting going, ah! Yeah, the whole le the whole arena did that. The whole I know arena they did because it's the funniest penalty to take. I love that. Ah! On IR for the New Jersey Devils, just for their goalie situation: Jonathan Bernier, Good Mackenzie goalie. Blackwood, Good Andrew goalie. Hammond. Oh. All three are. On oh, they IR. just got him! They just yeah. got him! <laughs> He's on IR. When did that happen? <laughs> Don't know when he was injured, but uh, Blackwood also this year has an 894 in 23 games. They just have not received goaltending. Uh, 902 from Bernier in 10 games. And yeah, Hammond, they just got him and now he's on IR. And just to give you an idea of how disappointing the devil season is, one of the, one of the things I remember listening to just before the season on 32 Thoughts was... Um, they were talking about Blackwood and his vaccination status because remember he was one of the holdouts mm -hmm. for a while, and they were talking about um, his eligibility to play in games in Canada in March, and they were talking about games. I think specifically <laughs> the one you were going to or went to, and oh, then that game was rescheduled for yeah, like that January. Was oh, was it? Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, they they have some Canadian dates, and. One of the things they were talking about is those games are going to be important points if they have aspirations of making the playoffs. Oh, you won't be able to play in these playoff games. Dude, and like if you look at the Eastern Conference, like the good teams aren't going to get bad anytime soon. Montreal is going to be right back to relevant next year. I don't know how much of a threat, but they'll be right back to relevant. 
Uh, Detroit is going to pass New Jersey in short order. It, uh, you could argue they already have. Buffalo is going to pass New Jersey in short order. You could argue they already have. The Islanders will be back. Guys, what are you doing? All of those teams you named are ahead of the New Jersey Devils in, in the, the standings this year. It's just the Habs! It's the New Jersey Devils and then the Montreal Canadiens in the East. You'd it's like to think two. the Flyers have too much money to keep sucking this bad, but Cliff, uh, Chuck Fletcher's their GM. So it's really a race to the bottom next year of Ottawa and New Jersey. And I'm also looking at this. Look at New Jersey's goalies. Okay, so Bernier had a good season, good couple seasons in Detroit. He's injured this year, but he's got the best stats on the team. He played 10 games, and he's 500. His goals against average was a 306, and his save percentage is a 902. I mean, is it better than John Gillies' 380 goals against average and 884? This is the problem. Sure. Or Mackenzie Blackwood, who's played the most out of any of the goalies in the Devils, 894 to 329. Or Nico Dawes, who played on uh, Wednesday night, who has a 901 and a, and a 301 goals against average. Honestly, 901 on New Jersey is Herculean. It is. But I do, <laughs> I do need to say, like, you're not going to win games if you're averaging three goals against per night. And, and, and they're team, spending a lot on D. And on, well, I mean, Subban's contract comes off the books here. but Subban, Hamilton, Butcher. Oh, who, Butcher's expensive. That's right. Remember? But, like, look at the... Here's the thing, too. They can't score. Jesper Bratt, obviously, you know, 21 goals. That's great. 42 assists. Jack Hughes, 21 goals. Those are the two team leaders. 21. Mm -hmm. And they got Heesher at 18. Dawson Mercer at 16. Um, Sharanovic and Zach are, like, 16 and 13. That's it. That's not a lot of scoring, guys. Jack Hughes did miss a chunk of the okay. early part of the sure. season. After being I'm just saying, hot. okay, so if Jack Hughes had 25 goals then... That's still, it's not Jack Hughes and Jesper Bratt and even Nico Huescher I'm talking about here. It's everybody else. There's no supporting cast. Well, this is the thing, right? It, oh, this guy got hurt. Well, every team goes somebody, through that, and some teams weather the storm pretty well. They can't weather, they can't weather nothing. Yeah. And, Everything would have to go right, and then barely they're squeaking in. So I, my question is, you know, the whole point of this conversation was, what is their identity? What are they going towards? What do you want? What do you want to be? Five bucks says they're one of the teams who claimed Hari Sateri. <laughs> oh, probably. Yeah, Five bucks. Yeah. Uh, I think just a hope and a prayer mm -hmm. that they're healthy next year, which uh, it's not a great strategy. Is it not? No. Okay. No, they got a deal. They got a deal. Subban in the off season. It sounds like that'll get done. Oh no, he's his deal's up. Yeah, he's, he's oh, it's up. Away. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my bad. There. Yeah, um, yeah. That's why we had that conversation oh, right. about them moving them a trade deadline. Blah, blah, blah. Right, right, right. My bad. Like <laughs> Jesse's got their cap friendly up with their picks. They have three picks in the fourth round. Like same first, same second, same third. They, they're not. They're <laughs> they're not behaving like a rebuilding team, but they're not playing like a good or even relevant team. They're kind of in a world of hurt here, man. They're in the worst spot because they thought they were good coming into the season. Bad and on accident. Bad on accident. On. People hate that phrase, but it's a phrase and we're using it. The New Jersey Devils this year were bad on accident. And that's the worst place you can be uh, as a professional sports team when you're building uh, a franchise. And this summer, they have to take a look at if they want to tear it down or if they want to try again. Tear down what? Tear down whatever they got if they want to actually be the rebuilding team and actually supply their franchise with some draft picks. You know, like that's the idea of tearing it down. Or if they want to try and go for it again. Man. Like the Devils don't have multiple first rounders or multiple second rounders or multiple third rounders. Mm -hmm. They got three fourths this year. That's it. They got, otherwise, they got their normal stable of draft picks. I, I yeah, okay. So, so we got to move on from the Devils, but it, sure, it's bleak. Is what I'm saying. It is bleak. It's interesting. Uh, like, I don't know what teams are thinking because now we got to wait for the draft lottery for this year that's going to change the fortunes of, you know, a few teams dramatically. But then everyone's talking about how great the 2023 draft is. And I wonder how many teams that suck this year are just going to be like, eh, what's another year? 